Walter Ryan Purcell noticed a gap in the gluten-free bread market whilst running his stall at the English market in Cork. Walter's dedication to perfection has brought him to the den today. We made some terrible bread in the beginning. It's, it's really, really hard to make. And then it, then one thing clicked, and then another thing clicked. It doesn't taste gluten-free. You know the way a lot of bread tastes awful, the gluten-free bread. I'd love if two of the dragons came in. Eamon Quinn of Super Quinn fame, and Alison sounds really, really interesting. So I'd love those two dragons. That would be my dream. Hello, dragons. My wife, Josephine, and our two sons, Jack and Tom, moved to West Cork 10 years ago. And we started growing vegetables and making chutneys and jams, etc. But there was no real living in that. So I said to Josephine one day, we must make something that people want to eat every day. We came up with a really knockout product. This time last year, we sold 12 loaves in the lovely shop called Bradley's in North Main Street in Cork. For the second week, week, we sold 92 loaves. And we're basically in every super valley now, under a line between Ennis Diamond and Ennis Gorthy. Our turnover now, 12 months later, is 25,000 per month. I know July next year, it's going to be 100,000 per month. At the moment, the 25,000 is made up of 20,000 for our products. But we're also distributing for seven other Food Academy suppliers. And that's becoming quite an important revenue stream for our business now. We're looking for 50,000 euros now for 20% of our business. I hope I haven't overvalued it because I know you hate companies overvaluing their businesses. <laughs> A cautious valuation by Walter, but can his bread and tea brack rise to the challenge? Establishing brand loyalty from the outset has been key to Walter's success. But will his recipes impress the dragons? Walter, your product tastes great. Thank really, you very really much. good. Have you a history in the food business? I'm a farmer's son by trade and did agricultural science in UCD. When I came out of college in 87, I started a company shortly afterwards called Delicious Irish Foods Limited. And we actually distributed to all your dad's shops in Dublin. Amen. And then when we went to West Cork, we got into the food business because West Cork's all about well, food, really. I, I think they call West Cork the Silicon Valley of food. I'm very excited and interested, not so much by the food, although it tastes great, but by your numbers. Your current sales rate is 25,000 per month. That's right. Based on just your top line, I don't think there's any danger that you've overvalued your company. But what really matters is the bottom line. Yes. So what kind of profits are you making every month? At the moment, we're making about 5,000 euros profit per month. By this July, we'll be making about 12,000 per month. 12,000 per month on 50,000. Yes. So about 24% margin. Yes. So you're telling me that you have sales that are going up exponentially month over month you have 24% net margin, and you're valuing that business at 250,000 euro. Yes, well, as I said- do you, do you grow anything else down in West Cork that you're smoking or anything? <laughs> <laughs> because I really seriously, based on those numbers, you've undervalued your business. I understand that, and people have told me I should have been asking double. Um, this has never happened before in the den, by the way. Okay, <laughs> that's good. But you know, 10% of something is better than 100% of nothing. We've been bouncing along the bottom almost, you know. I totally understand. You, you know all Yeah, that. it's a cash flow problem it's, you have, it's exactly. Just, you, get, you get tired of bouncing along the it's bottom. It's a high class problem to have though. It so. is. <laughs> Walter, you have my undivided attention at this stage. What price are you selling it, the, the bread and the... I mean, the... it's not cheap. We're selling it at four euros. Four euros? Yeah, and there's, there's no problem with that. Is that the, what the shop is selling it for? Or? That's what the shop is selling it. Yes. Okay. We're selling it at three. I'm very impressed how close you are to your numbers. You're giving me monthly numbers and anyone who's on monthly numbers is close to their numbers. Okay. I'm dangerously close to them, I'm afraid. No, but it's healthy. It's very <laughs> healthy. Outside of super value, where do you expect to supply this product? We, we prefer to supply Irish-owned supermarkets because personally I think 
They contribute two to three times more to our economy, but I would like to export quite a lot as well and bring money back into our economy. As you walked in, I said, oh, God, this is not going to be great. I have to be honest with you, Walter. I saw the little yellow sign, oh, my God, he's selling me a goat. And <laughs> <laughs> then you come out with these sensational figures, yeah. right? You are what I dream of in the den, a peg. Potential, explosive growth. You've also talked through the idea of um, having other people's products in your distribution network, uh, and that adds, adds a bit of revenue. What kind of percentage is the distribution business versus the bakery uh, business? It's about 20%. The way I'm calculating it is that both double the whole time. As well as making and distributing his own gluten-free bread and tea brack, Walter runs a profitable distribution service. By addressing this problem for fellow artisan food producers, he has gained even more interest from the dragons. However, an earlier comment by him has concerned Alison. The one slight concern I have is, is the comment you've made about only dealing with Irish retailers. I, I thought that might be a problem. With that sentence, reduced your size of the potential market to 50%. So are you happy to, to go to 50% of the market and not address the rest of the market at all. This is something I'll discuss with the dragons that are on board with us, obviously. You can never say never, you know, one must open, open up to whatever you need to open up to. Walter has asked the dragons for 50,000 euro for a 20% share in his business. With all five dragons still in play, will Walter be offered what he came looking for? Walter, I'd certainly like to make you an offer. But I will leave the offer open if another dragon wants to add more money uh, for a similar percentage, and you could need a lot more money. But I, I think you're somebody I would like to work with. As you know, I would still very well connected in the retail industry. I love what you're doing with the distribution. So I'm, I'm going to offer you 50,000 for 20% of the, the business. Thank you very much. I was hoping you would, Eamon. Yeah. Super Queen got us going in the food business. Well, hopefully I can return the favour for, for uh, Lock Bag Farm. Thank you. I think you're great, Walter. Oh, you're, thank you. You're connected to your numbers. I wish you the best, but this is not my space. So I'm out, Walter. Yeah, thanks a million. Look, just you gave us monthly numbers. What's your projection for 2016? We'll be doing um, 50,000 a month. So that's 150,000 euro profit for the year, approximately. And that means your business is worth about a million euro. I just want you to think about that. Okay. I'm not what you're looking for in a dragon. Not only am I out, but I think you should be out too. I think you should turn around, walk out the door. You're undervaluing your business. Do this yourself and continue what you're doing. You don't need the help from one of these guys. I'm out. That's, that's really good advice and thank you very, very much. But I think we can grow this business so, so much with the right dragons. Passion for Walter's gluten-free bread and tea brack is running high in the den. With Eamon making an early offer, will Alison and Gavin outplay him? I can't believe that they're still hesitating, you know, with a success story <laughs> like this. I'm not going to hesitate yeah. any further. The sector you're in is tough, as, as you mm. well know, but if you've got a really good product, I think you're, you're, you're well on the way. So I'd like to offer you the full amount, 50,000 for 15% of the business. Alison has outplayed her fellow dragon, offering the full amount for 15%, 5% less than Eamon. So you're dropping out, are you, Eamon? No, I've made an offer. I'm waiting for you. Oh, well, look, he's you not going made... to... He's not have, going have to... Have you made an offer, Gavin? He's, he's have not... you made an offer, Gavin? Yeah, but, like, you know, he's got somebody with a huge track I'm, record I'm in the food I'm, business. I'm all, I'm all ears. Alison is at 15%. So uh, does the 15% attract you, or are you still sort of conscious of the Quinn connection there? I very much like the Quinn connection. Right. And I Walter, also... you, should, you shouldn't discuss other deals until he declares whether he's in or he's out. <laughs> if he's going to make a deal, yeah. have a deal. If he's not making a deal, then no, I wouldn't let's, talk. Let's be really open here. Um, yes, yeah, that, I think we should all be yeah, open. Yeah, I mean, well, right. when are you going to start? <laughs> <laughs>
Walter, you know time is money, and I'm sure you don't like long meetings. Imagine, so imagine having to deal with this. This is maybe a taste of things to come. <laughs> Walter, imagine having to deal with this sort of stuff and indecision. So it's not the way to do business, really. I'm going to offer you 50,000 euro for 20%. Is there any way we could do a deal with the three of you? Walter, I appreciate that, but um, no, I, I think the three-way thing becomes too cumbersome. No, I, All I, right, I, you know, you know. Three is a crowd, and Gavin declares himself out. With a wealth of food knowledge, Eamon and Alison have each offered Walter the full amount, but Eamon wants 5% more. I, I need both of you. Is there any chance you'd come in for the same for 15%. I know it's terrible giving away 30% of our business, um, but we'd have 100,000 in the coffers, and we've two exceptional people, and that's what I'd really, really like. OK, well, if it's over to me... Um... Yeah, I'll do that. Brilliant, fantastic. I'm very happy to accept and that. We, now we'll be well, well funded and well expertise. Thank you very, very much. Thanks. Everybody. And so Walter leaves with a hundred thousand euro, yes. double what he asked for. You guys got a great deal now, but I think he got, got a good a deal no, no. too. We got a phenomenal deal. We got a great deal. deal. He is fantastic. Yeah. And he's in profit. I mean, at this stage in that business, it's almost unheard of. In the middle of it all, when things were going brilliantly, Barry dropped a bit of a grenade in by saying, "Look." You need to get out of here. You don't need any of us. You've undervalued your business. Listen, we're struggling, you know. When you're in a small business, you struggle. You sell personal belongings. You do whatever you have to do. This is so much more than money. It's so much more than business. This means that my two boys are probably going to get a third level education. This means that we probably won't have to sell our little firm. This is security for me and my family for the rest of our lives. Thank <laughs> you.